Joining me in our Washington studio is Lucho Blanco Pitlo III. He's a research fellow at the Asia Pacific Pathways to Progress Foundation, a think tank based in the Philippines. Lucho, your take on what the big takeaway was at the ASEAN? Well, um, I, I think the trade deal that could have uh, been made, uh, the regional comprehensive economic partnership between ASEAN 10 countries and its dialogue partners uh, could have been the biggest uh, achievement that never was uh, because uh, it appears that still some countries uh, hold on to some protectionist measures, you know, especially for agriculture. Which countries India, are you talking about? India is a big uh, major economy that uh, appears to have, uh, could have been an obstacle to achieving this mega regional. Well, India trading. backed out of it. Yeah. Why? Um, I, I think the issue about the agricultural um, goods, uh, a lot of millions of uh, small-scale farmers in India can be hit if uh, its uh, agricultural market would be opened. I think there is also concern about the flood of uh, goods uh, that would be coming from China or from other ASEAN countries uh, with the opening uh, provided by the RCEP. What kind of message is the Trump administration sending to the region if the president of the United States is a no-show for the second year in the row and sends his brand new national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, instead? What does it say about the U.S. geopolitical priority? Well, uh, I, I think given the escalating U.S.-China rivalry, and Southeast Asia is one of the theaters where this competition is uh, being seen. I think the absence of President Trump is, is, is really a, a big, in a way, a blow to U.S. influence in the region, especially as China is uh, rushing up its uh, uh, influence. Uh, and at the same time, um, I think other countries are also more than willing to uh, reassure you know, ASEAN, especially, especially at a time when there's rising protectionism, there's rising threats to globalization, um, that there is still hope to keeping the, this trade order, this uh, uh, regional and global trade order. So I, I think um, the message of sending a less than, less than him personally uh, was a message that was not lost to many ASEAN leaders. I think the fact that some ASEAN leaders, many, ASEAN leaders did not attend uh, the as, uh, U.S. meeting um, called by the U.S. officials, mm -hmm. uh, by National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, uh, was, I, I think, the response to that. Well, and O'Brien apparently had a letter from Trump who invited ASEAN leaders to a special summit in the U.S. early next year. Lucho, what are the chances of that happening? Well, uh, I, I think that could be, uh, in, in a way, like a message to ASEAN that U.S. is still here and U.S. is still intent in keeping its uh, influence and commitment uh, to the region. But I, I think, again... Uh, but on U.S. terms. Yeah, I mean, the absence of Trump uh, in the ministerial meetings, because ASEAN puts a lot of emphasis on the importance of uh, not only the ASEAN summit, but as well as ASEAN-led uh, meetings like the Asian uh, ASEAN Regional Forum, the East Asia Summit, so I, I think, uh, in a way, President Trump was simply signaling that I might not, I might not be there physically. Uh, well, you all come to me. <laughs> you, you are all welcome to come to Washington. All right, we'll leave it there. Lucho Blanco Pitlo III, thank you so much. Welcome.